again with uh, Tyler Bowden, Tyler Bowden Energy Solutions out of San Clemente, California. And today's topic in our home solar series is going to be on net metering and how net metering is really a great way to go. Mm -hmm. I know there's two ways you can go with a solar system. You can go off grid, mm -hmm. you can go net metering. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you go off grid, there's a lot. Of, it's really expensive because you got to buy a lot more batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've just been I mean, you set me up really good, and I've been hitting it out of the park with net metering. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, for the first two years, I was had like seven, eight hundred dollars in credits each year. So I was sweet, but I was only getting back, I think, uh, like a seventy dollar check from Edison. So, yeah. so it was a little, you know, overproducing too much. But now that we have two electric cars, well, you know, once I bought that Tesla Model Three and started charging that up, I just started slowly eating away at that. Sure. Yeah, but um, why, don't, why don't you explain to our viewers how how net metering works and how it can benefit them? Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, when when you talk about the incentives that uh, make solar make sense for people across the country, you know, everybody knows about the tax credit, the federal tax credit that you get, which is now twenty six percent. It was thirty percent, and uh, it's twenty six percent now, and it'll it'll be sunsetting from here. But the other major benefit um, for going solar. Uh, which is only available in certain states, it's not available across the country, right. uh, is net metering. And so in, in, in certain states uh, around the country, uh, you could install solar on your roof and have it connected to the grid, um, but you might not get any credit for it, for the power that you produce and send to the grid. So that's not really to your benefit. It would take a lot longer to offset your cost if you're not getting credit for power right, that you send yeah. to the utility. And the truth of the matter is, is in the middle of the day when the sun is up and you're producing a lot of power with your solar, you're generally not using that much power. Oftentimes people are away from the house at work, kids are at school, and, uh, and so they're generating excess power during the daytime that they don't really necessarily need. And so net metering is a program that state legislatures have implemented across the country, including in California, which allows for uh, homeowners to get credit for the power that they generate and send to the utility companies during the day and then use that credit to apply it towards usage in the evening time at night when the sun is not up and producing power. Uh, so it, it's called net metering because it's all about netting out your usage every month. Uh, so when you go solar here in California, you engage into a net metering agreement with the utility, whether it's SDG&E or Edison or, or PG&E. And, uh, and as part of that agreement, um, you go into an annual billing cycle. So from, from the day that you turn on your solar system, you've already gotten the approvals from your local municipality and from the utility company. So you turn on that system and that begins your relevant period. It's a year-long billing cycle. Uh, so instead of being billed on your energy every month, you get billed just once a year for your energy. And so it starts on that first day and goes to 12 months after that day. And that 12 month, that, that, that last day is called your true up. So all the energy that you've used and produced uh, through the course of that year gets netted against each other and they come up with an overall balance on your account. Um, now, you still have a, the ability to check and see kind of how you're doing throughout the year. Like you were saying, you had a, right. a credit built up, and then when your true up came around, it was a lot lower, and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, what they do is even though your billing cycle is an annual billing cycle, uh, they, they still uh, send you statements once a month. So at the end of every month, they let you know, this is how much you sent us, this is how much we sent you, and this is what your balance is right now, your, your running balance and it just kind of rolls over to the next month, and then, and then, and then, all the way to the end of the year. Yeah, and, and what, make sure you watch this video to the end, because what I'm going to do is, um, in a, another segment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be showing uh, snapshots, screenshots of my solar production and of my um, electric bill each day for a few days to sort of give you an idea of how it works, uh, because you can use more energy than you produce with net metering and still get a credit. And so it's it operates like a debit credit system. So if you look at your um, your credit system as far as the billing system for your 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 uh, 
for Southern California Edison, mm -hmm. uh, different times of the day they're charging different amounts for whatever kilowatt hours you're using. Uh, getting to the peak in the summer now, Edison's at 61 cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah. And so it's, it's real that. important to have a battery to store that energy when it's at 24 cents and 31 cents a kilo or 34 cents a kilowatt hour. And then once the battery's full, it starts going back to the grid at 61 cents. So you're getting that 61 cents a kilowatt hour credit. And then just before that peak ends and it goes into the lower peak rate, the battery dumps three quarters of the battery back into the grid so you get maximum credit at 61 cents a kilowatt hour for that energy. Yeah, so just to kind of take it a step back uh, from there to, to, to speak on the time of use rates uh, for a moment, which is really important. And you, and you mentioned uh, in the beginning that right. uh, you, can, you can produce less than you, uh, than you use, but still have a negative balance which sounds backwards, it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but the reason that you can do that, uh, depending on the rate that you're on, uh, is because you might be producing enough power during more expensive times of the day uh, to be able to offset your usage during the less expensive part of the day. Even if the volume of power is higher, the cost is lower, so theoretically you could produce less than you use and still offset your cost. Um, and, and that's effectively what, what you've been able to do with, with your system. Right. Um, and so you, you know, generated, you're, you were able to capture a rate schedule with Southern California Edison, which was more favorable than the rates that are in effect right now. Right now the rates, as if anybody is, is watching and is keeping up with the times, uh, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the most expensive time of the day, which is uh, common throughout California in this day and age. And we can talk about why with the duck curve and all those things. but. Uh, but in your case, you were able, able to capture a rate uh, exceeded the 4 p.m. to 9 right. p.m. time. So even without a battery for you, you were able to produce enough power at a higher value uh, to offset your usage right. uh, or your cost, even though in certain months you might be producing less than you're using. Well, well the battery, the ba I'll tell you, this battery makes a huge difference in that metering. The battery does. The battery adds even more to that, right? And, yeah. Uh, because yeah. you, you, like you said, you store the power in the battery in the morning time when power is less expensive, and then when it becomes more expensive, then the battery starts to discharge power instead of pulling power from the grid at that higher cost. Sure, it it definitely makes a difference, and uh, particularly now with you having two electric vehicles, you know that that uh, that seven hundred dollar credit you were talking about before might not be the case every year now with the, exactly. with the two EVs. Yeah. But one, one, uh, one point, you know, to speak on net metering uh, on, on that uh, topic, um, you know, the reason that when you had a, a $700 or whatever credit you had, uh, and then it got converted into a $70 or whatever credit, that's important to note. For anybody that's looking at solar right now, uh, it's not really to your benefit to install too much power if you don't plan on using that power. Now, in your case, right. you were getting the EVs, you knew you wanted to use more power, right. so you wanted to kind of just, just plan for the future and front load the solar system size exactly. uh, to plan for the EVs. But, but uh, if somebody has a set amount of usage every year and they know they're going to continue using that amount, you don't want to overshoot that target too much. Uh, it looks good during the relevant period, but when it comes to your true up time, if you've built up a credit, they actually convert that credit into a wholesale rate. Instead of retail, you've been getting credits at retail rate throughout the year, but at the end of the year, if you still have a credit left over, it converts to wholesale. So it's, it's actually about better 1%. Not to I think it's 1%. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's right uh, around there. I think it's, it's between three and, and, and four cents per kilowatt hour is, is what it works out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's uh, so it's not very good. It's it's uh, or if you oversize your system, you just turn your air conditioning down to 70 in the summer and really yeah. stay chill. You yeah, know. so a lot of people do that, and, and uh, you know, it's it, instead no of the 78 recommended by Edison, right? <laughs> and I can say that nobody's ever come back to me and said, Hey, I think I got too many solar panels. Yeah, uh, because typically, if you install too many solar panels, you'll find a way to use that power. Uh, and so, so I, I generally do recommend overshooting that. 100% mark just a little bit to give you kind of a comfort zone of, of, of using power, uh, but not too much because it's not really to your benefit to do that. You're not going to make money off of extra production. Yes. Great. Great chat.
Great nice, chat. nice chat with you on this, man. It's, it's awesome. Always. Yeah, so um, this concludes uh, this interview with Tyler um, on our net metering segment. And, uh, we're going to have another few videos coming up. We got a we're going to regenerate some energy here and, and um, a couple more videos we're going to do is one, we're going to do a video on factoring in how many panels you would need to power your EV if you wanted to, you know, go above just what it was to run your house and you, you're planning on getting an electric vehicle and you need extra panels to cover um, the, the charging for your electric vehicle. That's something we're going to talk about. And then we're also going to talk about, what's the other video we're going to do? We're going to... Batteries. We're, we're going to talk batteries. A yeah, big one. We're going to have a big one on batteries. Which is the best? What are the differences between them? And all that. But in the meantime, if you want to contact Tyler, uh, his link to his website will be in the description below. Feel free to reach out to him and call him. He'd be more than happy to chat with you. Uh, if you want him to come out to your house and look at your house as far as solar, he'll be a straight shooter with you. He's... Uh, no pressure whatsoever. He doesn't. He's not an arm twister. He just he educates you, gives you his card, and leaves. So That's don't right. forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. This first clip is a copy of my bill from June 18th, which shows a minus six dollar credit. That's for the current month of that uh, net metering bill. As we're coming up on this next clip, it's a copy of my solar production for the 19th of June, which shows uh, production. And then, then my bill for the 19th shows that I gained $4, so I have a minus $10 for the month. <music>